everyone. Call our meeting to order. The first item we have on the agenda is a hearing on House Bill 2397. Uh, Jill, would you like to start on this? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. What House Bill 2397 is the actual House budget as it came out of House committee. And so if you would look at it, that's what you would see is all the House uh the House, the actual House of Representatives, their uh, position on the budget. So that is uh, House Bill 2397. Thank you. And who are we going to have uh, go over that? And then I, I think if we could have Scott Abbott from Scott. our office discuss Senate Bill 314. Scott, are you there? I am. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning, everyone. Uh, Senate Bill 314 is the yearly or typically yearly statutory conflicts reconciliation bill. Uh, the reconciliation bill combines amendments to statutes that have been amended multiple times in different bills. Uh, the purpose is to create one version of each of those statutes uh, when a statute is amended multiple times and those amendments are not reconciled, then multiple versions of the same statute are created to reflect uh, the amendments made to that statute by each of those bills that have passed into law. Um, the bill would make no substantive changes to current law. The changes that are reflected in Senate Bill 314 to those statutes, uh, those changes have all already passed and been signed into law uh, in various other uh, pieces of legislation. So the bill would take effect upon publication in the statute book, uh, July 1 of this year, so that those amendments are reconciled uh, before the next version of the statute would be published in the Kansas Statutes Annotated. So Mr. Chairman, I would be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for Scott? Senator Hawk. Uh, just uh, for informational purposes, and I did ask this of JG, um, when we reconcile, are there ever any physical uh, consequences to that reconciliation? And I think the answer is no, but I just wanted to officially ask that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator, so like I said, the amendments reflected in the conflicts reconciliation bill have all already been passed and signed into law into other legislation. So any changes that are reflected there um, are effectively law whether you reconcile those conflicts or not. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions? Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. We need to make a motion on this. Before we uh, close the hearing, are, is there anyone here that was wanting to speak on uh, House Bill 2397? Seeing no one. Uh, committee, are there any additional questions from the committee? Any other questions? Seeing none, we will close the hearing on House Bill 2397, and I would like to recognize Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that the contents of Senate Bill 314 be placed into House Bill 2397, and a substitute bill be passed, Senate substitute for House Bill 2397. We have a motion. We have a second. Second by Senator Hawk. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.
Next item we have on the agenda is uh, our continued discussion on some omnibus items. Um, committee, the, th the 340B program uh, was tr some discussion on the, uh, the oversight of that uh, uh, overview committee uh, and would like to offer a Senate position that we uh, have the LCC appoint uh, an interim committee uh, instead of using the Bob Bethel committee. And I'm again. Just out of curiosity, I just, uh, my question would be, is this gonna take more than a day? And or a half a day, and that's why I was thinking the Bob Bethel committee would be just fine because there's already a committee that's set up. This is a federal issue, I just think. I would just say that there was concern and, and more folks were in favor of having a, a, a new appointed committee on this. I think it, it's more than just um, the price and the PMBs, I, I think there's, there's there's more things involved is what I've been told. So I think it was uh, important that uh, we had a position with uh, an interim committee. Senator Petty. Well, I'm just gonna, I, I, I you know, I mean, I think the 340B program, I think it really does need to be uh, looked at, but the, the can care oversight, the Bob Ethel committee, which is one and the same, they're established, they're uh, any, any agency or any group that would be involved is already going, is already, you know, and the going to be presenting before the, the Bob Bethel, it makes it, it seems like we're now talking about actually wanting to spend more money to re, to look into this issue than use uh, a, a established uh, oversight committee that this legislature has in place. I mean, the Bob Bethel, I I do have the privilege of sitting on that, but um, you know they do uh, meet not just in the interim, but throughout the whole session. And um, so I just think if, you, if we're taking a position of wanting to have it looked at and have those different organizations, federal and state, provide information, I think when we're talking about the best use of services that we should look at what we already have available and use that instead of saying we want the LCC to set up another committee. LCC is going to be pretty busy if they're still going to be in charge of a lot of money this summer. Senator Sondro. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't disagree that that perhaps could be the ultimate uh, oversight organization um, after a number of things are resolved, but there obviously needs to be an in-depth analysis of the uh, markup and margin. There needs to be much transparency on uh, the volumes that are being used, how they're being used, who they're applied to. And I just, you know, I was ran that committee here uh, myself. I've been on it. Um, it's a full two days uh, quarterly, and we are jam-packed with issues all the time. And it, the time would not allow us to go into this in the depth that this needs to be looked at. So uh, perhaps in a longer term, yes. But initially, to get to the facts and get to the bottom of this and thoroughly vet it, I just don't think they have the time. So I'd support your suggestion, Mr. Chairman. Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just add to that that the, the Bob Bethel Committee is, is tasked with Medicaid oversight, um, not commercial insurance oversight. Um, it really isn't tasked with, with that particular uh, expertise in mind. So I think that's a lot of what, um, what has inspired having the LCC appoint an interim committee that perhaps has more expertise in the area of commercial insurance oversight. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Hawk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to point out for information, the House position is the Bob Bethel Committee. Uh, but my question is if uh, LCC is to appoint a committee to look into the PBMs and, and the 340B uh, issues, are we going to prescribe uh, what the makeup of that committee would be, or is it just up to the LCC uh, to figure that out? Well, I, I guess if, if we wanted to put the mix, we could. I, I really uh, was just uh, leaving it to the LCC, but I, if the committee's you know, more comfortable putting the, the numbers to it, that's fine. Senator Hall. Follow-up question. Um, if if we pass this and then it goes into our position and assuming our position wins out in uh, negotiations with the House, uh, does this guarantee that that committee would be set up? Um, knowing that this is kind of a pressing issue, I certainly would not want this to lag on. So um, I just want to make sure it got done. Maybe we want to put a timeline on it. I'm not sure what that should be, but. If we choose to make it an LCC appointed committee, I don't know what your thinking is on that. I, I don't know about the timeline either. I, that wasn't anything that that uh, that I would uh, think that the LCC would probably want to get on it right away. Also, I think it's something that's uh, been talked about and they're wanting to do it. Other questions? So as far as the numbers, we could, you know, whatever the committee's desire, but center begin. Are we going to write a charge for that committee? Is there a charge? Is there a charge? What Senator Solentrop talked about it. Is there a charge that's on this piece of paper in the House? I think it's pretty much what the House had other than just the, the, the oversight was Instead of the Bob Bethel was the LCC appointed interim has only changed. I think that we were talking about. So we could put people on there that doesn't have any background or experience in the LCC. Hmm. So I guess uh, I, I, the only reason I was thinking Bob Bethel is just they, they're dealing with a lot of health issues anyway, so they probably have a little bit of background. I think the thought was, is, is, like Senator Solentrump had mentioned earlier, Senator Solentrump. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Given the time of year that it is ready, I would also propose that we just put this off entirely, take that Senate position, and we pick it up on the uh, first part of our agenda next year. We've got capable people in this committee. We can have a hearing about it. We can take the time to uh, delve into it, get the facts and figures, uh, cast some transparency on it and we can deal with it in pretty short order. So I don't think it's anything of an urgent nature that it has to be in Bob Bethel this year, this summer, this fall. Uh, we can take it up first thing next year. Well, and that, I, might, that might sort the thing out in its entirety because then the House could take their time and work it as well in appropriations. I, I, good point. I, I just think that uh, with the House having their position and if, if we want our position and and we want the LCC we, we ought to put it put it in at this time um, if not if we push it off I, I I'm not sure where they're at on it but that they'd want to not have their position Mr. chairman if I may yes Senator Schultz, Quite frankly it's not that urgent of an issue so it could very well be put off till next session thank you Senator McGinn just another suggestion um, of a committee. Since this also has to do with money, um, it also could fit with the Legislative Budget Committee because you'll you'll be requesting meetings, you or Troy or whoever chair this next year, um, will request meetings, and it could come before the Legislative Budget Committee as well. Right. No, it, it, it could. I think, you know, 
all the suggestions. I just um, I just think we ought to have the LCC position, and I'm not sure where the house is going to be. Uh, you know, I, I don't want them to jeopardize some of their boats over there. You know, and, and passing their budget, and I don't know that this will or won't, but we haven't talked to to the house about that. But I just uh, I know that uh, there's some, some folks that uh, this was important to to have the LCC uh, oversight. So, Senator Kirshen. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is the LCC they willing to take that on? Are they they're aware of it? Yes. So I guess it would just, uh, we want to have consent on this and, uh, or do we want to vote on it? I, is everybody okay with the LCC oversight? Is there anybody that's not? Pardon me? Senator Hawk. Uh, I, I'd like to leave it open-ended. Uh, uh, I think there may be a difference of opinion about how urgent this is, and I'm, I'm not positive about that, but relative to us reaching agreement on the budget with the House. Um, I, I, I'm comfortable with us suggesting uh, an LCC appointed committee, but I certainly wouldn't want to, to fall on my sword over this. And uh, it, it seems that we need to do something with it, but uh, if we could keep it kind of more general and if the uh, Ways and Means Committee would allow us as conference negotiators to make the best decision possible on that, I'd be more comfortable than um, being locked into an LCC appointed committee position. Is there anyone else that's not in favor of the LCC? Senator Petty? Senator Hawk? Yes. He did, but I'm saying I think we should have the LCC, and I, I was asking if there was anyone that was disagree, LCC, did appoint an interim committee, yes. The bill has been sitting in an insurance committee all, all session. I, I think we'll, yeah, I think we'll leave that up to the LCC as to. So, I mean, that's probably the point. I, I don't know. I'm just uh, suggesting the LCC. Everyone else is okay with it, then we'll adopt that proviso. Senator Petty. I, I, I do. Th I mean, I, I, you know, there are many important issues, and and it is difficult for the legislature to address to all of them, but. I do think that this is a, uh, in some areas, this is a very urgent issue to be dealt with because it does impact the lives of people and how they are able to, and the funding for their prescription drugs and the cost of their drugs. So especially our rural hospitals. So I wouldn't want to, to leave it out there that it's not an important issue. I think it is a very important issue. And it has, there was a bill out there that um, actually we just had, you know, an informational hearing and nothing else was done. So um, it, it, it is an issue that should be addressed. Thank you. And, and I think that's why we, we need to get our position with the LCC and, and go from there. Thank you. Any other discussion? Just want to reiterate, it is a rural hospital issue. So we see one. Disagree. Okay, so we're, we'll go ahead and, and put the uh, LCC uh, uh, interim committee in. Next item we have uh, the state library um, was asked to uh, ask the committee to consider putting 30000 in there with the possibility of having the state library move or do s some type of uh, um, projects with it. Possibly moving. 
Yes. Yes. I'm not sure. I just, this, the information that I received was that uh, we'd like to ask for $30,000 for possibly moving. Third floor, yes. Yeah. The north, north side. Senator Schlantrop. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think some of that has to do with uh, space uh, in and around their area. Uh, doesn't necessarily has to do with moving the entire library, but there's some space within um, their current existing environment that could be then utilized to where uh, some other office arrangements can be made. It's uh, more of a factor of that than it is to move the library in itself. So, thank you. Sir, I'm again. So how come we're just now hearing about that? And I'd like to know where they're going to move. Well, it seemed like you ought to have a plan. We'll talk to you. with you here in a minute. I'm, I'm on this one. I'll tell you all the details. But the conversation at hand is we've got an agency that wants money because we think we might do something. And I want to know what is something and where are we going? I think they're primarily looking at, look at it moving. And I, I don't have the information on I, I I should have asked a few more questions when, when it was brought up. But... Uh, been real short on time this morning. There's something I think we should deal with that next year, and then we might even know who's going to move in there and where they're going to go. And how well, much does it cost to move? Because they might need more than thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand is what they asked for, and I, I tell you what, we'll we'll push this off. I'll I'll try to get more uh, additional information because I, I I really didn't have time to to get much information on this. So we'll, we'll just let that set and you can, we'll discuss that a, a little bit later. Okay, the next item we have is uh, maintenance of effort. And we talked uh, yesterday about some of the options and I asked all the committee if they had any uh, um, ideas on where we could do one-time monies, you know, as as uh, uh, maintenance of effort uh, possibilities. Uh, I'll run down the list, and then uh, we'll listen to any ideas that committee members have. Um, we talked about the Promise Scholarship. We had committed uh, $10 million when we passed that bill. We can also do, uh, that's for 2022, and we could also do another $10 million in 2023. So... We, we could use $20 million from the Promise Scholarship. The higher ed utility bills, we talked about that. I've got a new number, uh, $11,134,615. And there was a suggestion that maybe we made that a little higher and then had uh, anyone that come in with any additional uh, utility bills that, that maybe lagged, you know, maybe they got their last bill and it didn't contain all of the increase that they could come back to like the State Finance Council and have uh, an application for the additional funds if they weren't covered 100%. Senator Solentrump. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just so I better understand the objective, uh, is it understood that we're trying to cover half of it this year and half of it next year, and if we do just cover half of it this year, um, as usual, things change. We can go back and look at a reallocation of some other resources for next year. What what do you feel like the objective is at this point? Well, I, I feel like that we need to do uh, a minimum of half because uh, um, I understand that the state board uh, – Secretary Watson is very concerned that we make sure that we get this covered, that we don't jeopardize uh, our uh, 
federal funds. And I don't know. Uh, you got a nod for half. Um, I, uh, I, I guess if if uh, if Adam would want to come up and speak to the committee, he's here. Uh, might help fill in the blanks a little bit. It, it it seems like more is better than less. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Adam Profit, uh, Director of the Budget. Yes, the, the recommendation that we put forth was to fund half of the shortfall in fiscal 22 and then fund the entirety of the shortfall um, in fiscal 23. The math as we have it right now is about $53 million would cover half for fiscal 22. That amount could change because it's based on percent of total state expenditures. So as a budget fluctuates up and down, we'll have to see what the total is going to be. But 53 gets us there to be perfectly gets us halfway there to be perfectly clear this is not without risk right we'll still have to submit a waiver and, and ask for relief for the other half of it but it shows a good faith effort that we're willing to push towards that without going 105 million dollars at the last second to try to get there and um, just as a reminder to the committee this money is going to higher ed but the risk if we miss the maintenance of effort for higher ed applies to federal funding for both higher ed and k-12 that's what we're trying to avoid Questions for Adam? Senator Petty? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so the 33, 30, um, 53 million in 2022, and then you said it still involves a waiver. Do you now know very much about the waiver process? Um, I, I don't know what the details of the waiver process are, no, but I know that the um, Secretary of the U.S. Department of Education has released uh, an FAQ, and I'd be happy to circulate that to the committee. Um, and it uh, goes into some of the considerations that the Secretary would take as they're looking at waiver requests. Um, it lays out what some of the allowable funding is as it relates to higher ed, and then what some of the unallowable uses would be. Um, the waivers don't have to be submitted until December, uh, but it would behoove us to get it in as quickly as possible. So it, can I? Yes, go ahead. Sir. So then um, you said it doesn't have to be uh, submitted till December. Do we have any time? Do you, is there any timeline that you know right now about the waiver? Like if we submit it, they're saying there should be, we hear back within 30 to 60 days or any yeah. idea? I don't have those details, I'm sorry. Um, and to be clear, the if we do get approval for the waiver, it would be a provisional approval uh, because the actual waiver, they'll want to see where the expenditure is actualized at the end of fiscal 22. But unless you really steer away from what you submitted, it should be just fine. Thank you. Senator Hawk. Um, I, I'm just thinking about your question about the utilities, about whether we ought to fund the uh, 11.134 million um, half of it in 22 and the other half in 23, and maybe it doesn't matter, but um, that bill actually occurred in 21, and they have to pay it for 21. So I, I want to make sure they have funds to pay, uh, I, and I don't want the other um, utility money that we may be funding for other agencies through state general fund that hadn't have anything to do with this I don't know that I want to spread that money out when the bill's due now, not two years from now. So, and, and their bill is due also, and, and they wouldn't get this money until July. So, I mean, they're, they're going to have to carry it a little while, even if we take care of them. I just didn't want them to wait two years to get the money. No, that's, the that's why we're talking the whole amount. We're not talking half in yeah. 22 and half Good. in 23. Good. I'm, I agree that if, if we're going to give it by category, or if we want to potentially give uh, it in a, in a more general thing and give them some opportunity to decide where their needs might be. I'd still like to see some oversight of that, whether legislative budget committee or. Well, and, and the suggestion too was if, if we want to go a little bit more, like I said, instead of 11.134, you know, if we want to add a couple hundred thousand on that or something in case somebody has a surprise bill that comes late, we would cover it, and if, if, it, if there is none, uh, and if they, they could come to the State Finance Council and say, hey, we got this bill, and they'd use money. If not, it would lapse back in the SGF, so. Senator Petty. So, Mr. Chairman, were you, um, when you were talking about half, I was thinking you were talking about 
53 million and not half of the utility bill, but looking at a way to have some 53 million right. this year that's as part of maintenance of effort. Is that correct? You're correct. I, the, that's why I was telling Senator Hawk, we weren't talking half of a utility bill in 22 and 23. We're talking the entire uh, utility bill. Even with that, they won't get it until July. So, other questions? Okay, and, and the, the uh, third item we discussed um, was also just uh, doing some uh, actually just doing uh, uh, I don't know how to say this um, more money just for the colleges to where they'd have uh, more discretion and uh, we could do, you know, uh, another chunk of money there. I, I think I'd, I'd wrote down like 10 to $15 million. And that's another option that we can use to adjust our dollars so we make sure that we get to the 53 or above. Senator Solentrop. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our region schools have a significant problem with deferred maintenance. And if we give them 10 to $15 million, I would like to have the uh, money specifically targeted to the deferred maintenance. They have no plan to address that. We have one board member that has aggressively pursued it. I think he's got some uh, great ideas and working as hard as he can to address the issue. But it's lagged and it's lagged and it's lagged. And I think if we're going to give them some funds like this, then I think we need to send more uh, detailed requirements on its use. And to me, deferred maintenance would be one of the highest priorities we could give uh, that money to. So thank you. If we do parameters, the, the problem that deferred maintenance will not count for maintenance of effort. So it doesn't count. So we, we could put some other parameters that, we make sure that we count for maintenance effort because that's what we're trying to cover here. Senator McGinn. Um, I think we had this history in an earlier meeting and the reason I don't support deferred maintenance is because uh, we have asked for a couple of decades now for universities to set up an endowment when they receive money for a building um, for private and then also for public and they have just ignored it. And that's why they're in the situation they're in now. Okay, and moving on, um, another uh, program that I don't think we discussed yesterday, but uh, a student need based program with uh, uh, scholarships for, uh, and it's across the board. And Senator Hawk had asked yesterday if there was any way we could do anything for private schools. This does include private schools, so this would, would be across the board. Uh, I believe they're funding about 9,500 students or 95 applied. I'm not sure. Is that applications? Okay, they had 9,500 applications, and they're only able to fill a certain number because they don't have enough funds to get to the 9,500. So there, there is a need, need there. Uh, we could figure an amount. We, we could go up to 26 million. That's the top. So we could go, you know, a million. We could go whatever number we could use here. Again, we could use this for balancing as far as trying to get 53 million or above. So, uh, and this does uh, qualify for the maintenance of effort. Senator McGinn. I have a question for Shirley. Shirley? So this is the comprehensive grants. And what do they currently get right now? Without any add-ons or anything else, what do they? What is their base comprehensive grant? The current funding in that grant is about sixteen million, and again, about half to the universities and half to and, and colleges and half to the independent and privates. So eight million to the independent private. Correct. Okay. And so we're going to get. They have an eight million base, and we're going to give them twenty-three million in this proposal. 
No, I just said we could go up to that amount. No, it, it, it's what, whatever, like I said, we can use this for balancing. That's what I was saying. What I found out this morning is they have about 9,500 students apply. And if we were to fully fund all that apply, it would be about 42 million. So if you take the 16 and the 26, you get to the full funding. So are they gonna become a public university school? I mean, I'm just curious, we're, we're gonna go fund all of their students and they're a private school. So if we don't like how they spend their money, there's no, no adjustment we can make in the future. So I just don't understand why we're throwing all this money at the private schools. Don't mind up in the comprehensive grant a little bit, but it sounds to me like we're gonna triple it. No, 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 I just said, she told me that was the, the maximum, which would take care of all 9,500. Right. I, mean, like I said, we could, we could do a million, we could do up to 26, where, wherever the committee would choose to go with this. And, you know, it's just another place. And I guess I have a question, Shirley, too. Uh, these are need-based scholarships? Correct. So th these students have to qualify as far as uh, income and so forth, correct? Yeah, so it's uh, Senator Saltrump. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I just want to remind the committee that we throw billions of dollars to our public K-12 schools, and we can't even tell them to give a civics class to our students. So the example of us providing some money for these private schools and getting into their curriculum, to me, is a ridiculous argument. Thank you. Senator Hawk. Um, I think it's good that we're looking at some of these broad categories. Um, one of the concerns I have, and of course I'm closer to the one university in my community, but I, I know we had voluntary reductions in administrative salaries, 10%, trying to get through. Um, I've seen figures as much as uh, 90-some million dollars in terms of our bigger universities, maybe more than that in terms of the hit as to what the pandemic and COVID did. Um, we furloughed like 1,800 people at K-State um, to inquire and terminated uh, the Ace account I recently had and froze new hires. So, um, I, I, and I know we shorted, uh, the governor made uh, reduced allocation um, cut. And so I, I like that you're looking at the discretion piece in terms of us making them whole. I'm not sure what else because uh, that's still, we still have a problem in terms of keeping our universities and I want to make sure we get our students back to school. And I think that has a big payoff, not just for our universities, but for our economic development and encouraging businesses to come to Kansas and getting people to work and having the skilled people we need. I think it's good that we look at a lot of creative ways to do this. And uh, I, I certainly would like to give the universities uh, some flexibility because uh, one size doesn't fit all. There, we saw that in the utility bills. Some had bigger ones than others, and there's some variation between institutions. So if there's some way we can be flexible with this, I don't mind having some oversight of it. But I want to I make sure we actually help them and if we, and I certainly don't want to lose the up to a billion dollars in K-12 by not funding uh, this maintenance of effort over these two years. And my fingers crossed we'll get the waiver. So I don't want to do anything that would jeopardize that. I don't think any of us do. Senator Petty? One of my problems that as I'm listening to this discussion, it would be, and maybe, I did have this and I just can't locate it at the moment or maybe you can just tell me a source, but it would be nice if we had in front of us what kinds of things fall under maintenance of effort. So we're having discussions and, and um, uh, it's, it's a little difficult to know for sure. Uh, you shared with us that um, uh, building maintenance, yeah. deferred maintenance would not right. fall in that category, uh, but uh, I know you also laid out there the possibility of having, of putting in place a fund 
that I guess, and I think that might have been what Senator Hawk was referring to then, that university, that our uh, you know, public system, our universities and our um, community colleges and our technical schools could apply for, um, that would fall under maintenance of effort, but it certainly would be nice as we're having this discussion that, that it was clear what does come under maintenance of effort. Yes, it's and, and until you have an idea, and then you you ask them, and they, you know, they say, "Well, if we're in maintenance, that doesn't work." Uh, we put some in capers. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, so I I don't know. Maybe maybe staff does have. Do you have a list, uh, Amy? Mr. Chairman, Norma Volkmer, the K-12 Fiscal Analyst with KLRG. Uh, last week during the omnibus meetings, you would have received an IRA memo that was outlining the federal funds uh, on page nine under maintenance of effort. Uh, there are three paragraphs that outline um, what federal guidance has told us uh, counts for each of the, the calculations. And I do have extra memos that I can pass out to some committee members if you'd like. That'd be helpful. Thank you. Even with the list, it's still, you know, not a sure, sure thing. But one other area that I want to hit on, and then uh, we'll see if what other ideas might be out there. But the technical colleges had a bill in the uh, in the House that passed out of the House and uh, has not crossed the line in the Senate. But it had to do with. Uh, um, I think it was about seven million dollars, but uh, some of that was for some buildings, and buildings do not count. But uh, equipment and uh, remodel, like if you had a, an existing program and you you needed to change the the, the building inside, you know, uh, per se, like welding or something, so you could buy the welding equipment and you could uh, do maintenance inside the. Uh, or remodel inside the, uh, the existing buildings. Anyway, we talk, I, I, I did visit with the, the tech colleges and, and if we did 3.5 million, it would allow them, each, each tech college would get $500,000 for uh, using for equipment or remodel. And I asked, and they said every one of the uh, tech colleges has uh, proposals for new or updated uh, programs and equipment. So I, I asked, I said, so is that something that it's on their planning, long-term planning, and, and so it's something that counts for uh, maintenance of effort and it would allow them to add some additional programming and equipment so that's another option senator kershen thank you mr chairman does remodeling the library count <laughs> <laughs> we'll remodel after it's moved and the building goes to it, it, would it count it might no 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 not that oh <laughs> On the what you just suggested. Yes, it does count. Counts. Yes, okay. it does. Yes. Check that out, and they said it would, would, would work. And that's the list that that uh, we had talked about earlier, you know, and, and yesterday. So uh, I'd open this up for other ideas uh, or possibilities, if anybody has any. Senator Hawk? Uh, I'm just curious what, what uh, of that list, what might go and what the needs might be in community colleges. Some, um, and I know the, the Senate bill, the CTE program got hit kind of hard last year because a lot of it because of scheduling and the, the fact that not all K-12 schools were open and the tech colleges and community colleges. So if there's something we can do for community colleges, and I'm not sure 
what the need is and i know we put some of our earlier money and i think i think that's already a done deal in our budget is it not the eight million or so we put yeah in? the senate bill 155 yes we, yeah, did, we yeah. did we did fully fund that I just wonder if that's just another area that might need a little bit of extra because what we're trying to do what's noble about the 53 million and doing it both years and keeping our maintenance of effort is we're trying to get our all of our students k-12 through college back into the routine so they can move into the labor force and we can get our economy up and running so i don't want to i don't want to leave community colleges out either no i think that's a good idea uh and you know key is one-time spending on these dollars so next year when they don't get it or the year after that they don't get it it's not a cut you know it's uh one time and uh you know i guess uh i could check and see with with the community colleges if if they have anything in particular that you know as far as equipment or uh, remodel you know senator mcginn that one time money back to the comprehensive grants if they were to receive any extra money that would be one time do they have to use it all jg's not in his head yes so we have to give kind of what they'll be able to use so right that, okay yes and, and that's why uh the, the technical colleges it was 500 and i said can they all and they, every one of them had a plan and so and if they don't they have to send it back correct jg or not? No. Okay. So, so they just did go into their SGF. Senator Hulk. Um, a little bit of extra information, and Shirley may want to. Um, I, I did ask, and uh, our our community colleges they have and technical that three million in tiered and twelve and non tiered is sort of an unmet amount. So there might be up to that fifteen million total. We look at this pot, the 53 million. So I don't know if we want to ask her to explain that. Certainly better than I. Sure, Shirley, would you mind explaining that as a possibility for us? So, as you might remember, quite a few years ago, they combined the technical colleges and community colleges with a new funding model through the Board of Regents. Um, and they made a tiered and a non-tiered line item that funds technical and community colleges. Tiered is technical uh, classes and non-tiered are your general education classes. So the formula is based on what classes each of the colleges teach of how much money they receive in tiered and non-tiered. When that funding model was put together, it was never fully funded. And there's almost always during session conversations about adding money to tiered and non-tiered, which has happened in the past, um, to get to fully funding. And currently, there's about a little over $3 million in tiered to close that gap, and about 12 something in the non-tiered but again, with this being one-time money, and that goes into their operating, but I was just providing that as an example of a funding that is not currently met. So if we did add funding there and then we didn't a year or two down the road in there? Then they go back to. Struggling. Senator Petty. Uh, Thank you. I, I don't know if this had, was an early conversation, but, you know, we have done some funding for dual enrollment, and that's, um, that certainly could be an area that we could put more funding into when it comes to dual enrollment, and that qualifies. Would that uh, cover maintenance of effort? Uh, the dual enrollment, uh, I guess it would be tuition, right? Yes, that's... On... Here, here again, I don't know if that would be one-time money, though. But, but of course, think about it, that, I mean, that, that would be, I mean, so you're helping dual enrollment be uh, juniors or seniors, you know, it would be one time, uh, it wouldn't, you, and there would not be as much available after two years, but that's, um, 
certainly is an area it falls into. The, another area is I think that we would be important to think about. We know that our universities uh, and our community colleges, that they have lost students. And so um, this would be a great way to help them uh, to be able to advertise and possibly offer scholarships for students coming back uh, doing uh, a, uh, a gap year or because of the pandemic not, not uh, being in school. And so uh, we know how important that is for our, our uh, universities and our community colleges to be able to meet their operating budgets, to be able to, to uh, bring students back to their campuses. So I do believe that um, uh, you know, a funding stream that would help them to advertise would, could fit into. Would, would advertising count, uh, do you think, Shirley? Yes, it should. Okay. okay. And it's part of operating. Yeah, the other question, I guess, that uh, these comprehensive grants that we're talking about, too, the, the community colleges participate in that, yes. don't they? Okay. So they would have that. But the advertising, that's, a, I, you know, I, I guess, you know, all, all the universities for advertising. I mean, it, but I, I wonder, they're, they're getting a large pot of money, too, that the universities from the, from the federal government also, right? Can they use that for advertising? I'm sorry. I, I, I said in, in the uh, federal relief plan, uh, the universities and the community colleges are get, all getting money direct from correct. the feds, correct? Yeah. And I don't know offhand what the stipulations are on it, what expenditures they can use that money for. Um, one other item, if, if you don't mind <coughs> bringing it up, excuse me, <coughs> that um, is more specific to community colleges that we've talked about in the past is the expenditures for developmental education, which are the costs that primarily it's the community colleges expend for the remedial reading and math classes so that the students can get into higher education. That would not be a one-time money either. That would be- Well, you'd one pay it for a certain time frame. Yes, sir. That's the only issue I have with- okay. Yeah, I agree. Trying to, when we, we get in, the further we get into that, and uh, it, it just two years, or they're falling off a cliff. Other ideas? Senator Kirshen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And there's no way we can talk, earmark that money and set it aside and pay it when we find re recipient place to put the dollars. I mean, we've got to pay 53 million and we got, if we come up with 30, we can't say, well, we're gonna, this is, this fund is, is what do we call that, management people, it's extra money it's targeted for this that we don't have expense for yet. You want to get the money, rather than just tokenly spend it sporadically so we get to 53 million. I just don't seem like that's this difficult. You can't save it, in other words. This maintenance of effort is, is, is an issue that we've never had in higher ed, and it, it is. It's, it's, it's uh, trying to juggle the balls here and make sure that we comply. Here forever now, too? Pardon me? Since we've initiated, that means we have to do it completely. From now on, too. That's why we're really looking for one-time expenses, you know, so we we don't get into that. <laughs> Senator Petty, Mr. Chairman, so so we we have an idea for for a certain amount of money, um, and we we do have a an amount that we want to reach that's fifty three million. But so that I can understand this, and maybe. Adam needs to answer this, I'm not sure. We have to show that this maintenance effort has occurred by, by December of 2021 or in order to really be real maintenance of effort. Adam? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the, the maintenance of effort is specific to the fiscal year that you're spending for. So it'll be fiscal year 22, higher ed expenditures relative to fiscal year 22 uh, state expenditures. As I mentioned earlier, um, 
along the same lines with getting a provisional approval if we were to get an approval for the waiver. Um, we turn in, we submit our documents by, I think it's by December of 21, which is what you plan on spending. And then there's another submission down the road for what you actually spent. And they track it along. There's a website right now, uh, for example, for K-12 that's tracking how we're doing against our maintenance of effort uh, under the CARES Act methodology. So just to follow up on that, we've now, um, and I think this is definitely a continuing conversation, but we have information about the maintenance effort. We, even though this, maybe we don't all love it and it's, it's a different system, but we do kind of have a track record. I mean, we had the, you know, we've gotten other federal funds that were expended. We had a Sparks committee that did that. I mean, if you have guidelines and you, we specify under these specific things that we already know, like the utility bills and the Promise Scholarship, which is um, uh, legislation that's been passed, and some decision about the comprehensive grants, then is there a possibility of then putting in place some sort of a, uh, you know, a list of things and then making it making it available that then then our you know our regions and our community colleges are, are, and maybe we could determine pools, I don't know, of funds our, and our technical colleges could apply, but they would have to fit within that and, and that would be, and then that would be a determination. I mean, we know the time, we know the parameters time, we know we would be establishing the amount of money. It seems like it's a potential of a way to, to look at without us right now having to make these decisions when we don't really have all of the information. I, th I think we can, you know, we've got, that's why we're, we're meeting, we've got all these possibilities. It's similar like Senator Solon Trump just mentioned, you know, uh, here's some, you know, like you, you just said the same thing in a different way is, you know, here's a pool of money and if, if you've got these particular items, you can apply and get it. I mean, it's, I guess, the oversight or the, the strings or whatever, the uh, accountability, you know, that, uh, that yes, I mean, we, we, we can, we can do a, a pot of money like that. I mean, it's, and it, as long as that meets the maintenance effort, that's our key. And, and, and like I said, I, I just want to keep focused on the one time spin because I, you know, too often when, when we, do one-time spending if it's used in programs that are going to continue, then it's a cut. So I don't want to do that to anybody. Anyone else have any ideas on one-time spends? Seeing none, and I, I guess Probably a, a way to handle this would be just to kind of go down the list and see what amounts everybody is comfortable with and, and kind of build a dollar number and a proviso. So um, I'll just start at the top. You know, we, we've got the, uh, the Promise Scholarships, which legislation has passed. We all agree that it was 10 and 22 and 10 and 23. So is, our, is everyone okay with that? Okay, the, the higher education uh, utility bills, including the community colleges and the technical colleges, uh, 11134615 Is there a desire to even add a little extra in case uh, there's some late bills? Or is that everybody okay with that? 200? Everybody okay with 200,000? And, and they could apply to the State Finance Council for that that additional money. Okay. The technical college, uh, the 3.5, I'm, I'm going to leave the, 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 the one till last, yeah. I, Balancing. Okay. 
on the technical colleges for equipment and uh, remodels, are we okay with the 3.5? 500,000 per community college or a technical college? Senator Petty. 3.5 million, is that what you're saying? Yes, it, it, it equates to 500,000 per school. Uh, I just think probably 22 because I really didn't ask him if they had any projects for 23. And so if we're going to have, you know, maybe a pot here later, we could, they could apply for that if, if in the latter years. So I, I, I think it would just be the 3.5 for uh, 22. Okay, and then the other two we can use for balancing, and, and, and I guess we'll start out with the comprehensive uh, uh, scholarships. Uh, Senator McGinn, do you have a, an amount that you're comfortable with? I really don't. I'm just worried about setting precedents. Um, again, our other entities that we fund are run by elected officials and they are private. And so I just wouldn't want, and since I heard this is one time money, that's certainly better. Um, but I just think we need to be very flexible on that one. And, and my, you know, that's that whole anticipation of if we get this, then, you know, we're gonna just keep blowing up the comprehensive grant in the future. That's my concern. Thank you. We're definitely targeted on one-time money. Suggestions on, on an amount? Did you Senator say? Hawk said four and four. Okay. Is that a good number for everyone? Okay, we'll do that. Senator McGinn. The technical colleges, when the, whoever talked about how they don't always get funded, tier one, tier two, or whatever. I mean, we have, we have enough money then to, not just for the remodel or setting up or paving, we have actual money in there. Well, I think, Shirley, uh, could, could you come to the mic, please? I just want to know, are we, are we helping them get up to where they haven't been in this or not? On the, how they're always underfunded, you said? You have not added any money to tiered or non-tiered, no. I thought you talked about that. That's what no, but we can. I, I just was hitting on <laughs> the 500000 they wanted for equipment and remodel to add some new programs. And each one of the schools is planning on doing that. But, yeah, if, if you want to add some for tiered and non-tiered, you know, is, but that wouldn't be one time, but. Uh, yeah, that, that technically would be considered operating type funds. Okay, so, Senator Hawk. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I know you wanted to save some discretion at the end, but <laughs> one of my concerns is the, the budget cut essentially that that higher ed got and we we went three percent but we're that, that won't count for uh, right maintenance of effort so but but adding to that would count uh it was they lost 37 million we, we could we could add to you know we did 24.9 we can add more in there uh i mean i'm i'm thinking they were short about 12 million uh from from what the governor had to Cut or they, the, the Board of Regents, et cetera. I, I certainly would think that would meet maintenance of effort, and I'd, I'd like to at least get to that amount of that $12 million to restore as long, that. As long as it's operational, yes. It yeah, it's operational. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that, and that then, was, I, then I could be sort of flexible with some of these right. long-term problems like tiered and non-tiered, but I, I'd like to get that whole filled. Okay. So so we we've got down to where we're, we're, we're to that position. And we had talked, I, I mentioned earlier that, you know, we could go, you know, 10 to 15 million in that area. 
and uh, need to add up here for before I do it. But Senator Petty, go ahead. You know, we talk. I mean, we've got on our list uh, funds for technical colleges. Our community colleges do have list of allowable funds that these could be used for, and if we were going to do them at the same level, which definitely um, helps uh, all across the state, if we were going to do them at the same level as we were talking about for technical colleges um, and for, for uh, equipment and allowable expenses, that would be a 9.5. The uh, community colleges, uh, I don't know, you know, the technical colleges, the reason they ask for this, they don't uh, get mill help on the mill levy. And so that's why they were trying to get some new programs and, and equipment and so forth. Uh, I'm not sure on the community colleges, you know, where we're at, but wouldn't they, if we put this, we were talking about this uh, um, extra dollars, if we, through Regents, I, I, and you mentioned some parameters on them dollars, and Senator Solentrop mentioned some parameters on the dollars, and I think Senator Kirshen would like to see some parameters on the dollars. The, these would go to all the schools. Am I right, Shirley? If, if, if we just add funds like we did the 24.9 million, and we're gonna add more to that, uh, that would be shared at all of them, right? Even, I guess even the community colleges and technical colleges would share in them funds. If we give them, they don't, is there tiered or non-tiered? But you could put in a fund that's just specifically for community colleges, like we did for technical colleges. Right, and just be right. specifically so, for so, so community colleges. Shirley, would you mind coming to the mic? I want to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay, if, if we're talking about now doing similar to the community colleges, and we want to make sure it's one time money. Okay, so if they got equipment or remodel or that type of thing that would count, does it need to go through the tiered of the non-tiered or we, can we just do like we did with the technical college say, okay, here's four, four and four for the community colleges and they have to use it for uh, equipment and remodel. The technical college money, there is a current fund in the Board of Regents for capital outlay that is the fund we would use to add the 3.5 because that's specific to capital outlay. If you're talking about adding operational funding to just the community colleges, we would need to add a new SGF account for just community colleges. And then if you wanted to add a proviso on how they were to expend that money, that would be up to you. Would that be a, 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 an issue to, to create a new account like that? or? Well, currently, the accounts that are expended for the tiered and or for the community colleges are the tiered and the non-tiered, and there's a formula depending on the types of classes they teach of how much money they get. But that would not be just specific to the community colleges because... That's de it, that money's dependent, that formula is dependent on what classes they teach, the distribution of that money. So I guess the question is, is, is to isolate this just for community colleges versus giving it to higher ed and then they do their formulas. Is, is, is you would issue? create an SGF account for community colleges, and if you wanted to put a proviso on it on how they were to expend that money or for what purposes to make sure it may, met maintenance of effort, you could do that. Senator Petty. So it would have, uh, it would stipulate it's a maintenance and effort fund that would go away in two years. Would that be one well, of the stipulations? It, it, it would be. We would need to make sure that 
uh, if, if you that the legislature doesn't refund it every year. Right. Yes. So that would be one of the stipulations. So it'd be correct. Wrong. They would need to recognize that this is not going to be ongoing funding. One time expenditure. Correct. <laughs> Senator Hulk. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. But um, if I heard you right, I want to make sure I did. We could, without creating a separate account, we could just say a dollar amount, five million dollars going into tiered and non-tiered. We could do something like that. Again, that's up to you. Yes, but it, but it would. But meet, that goes to technical colleges as well. But it would meet uh, maintenance of effort. Correct. And it would be essentially operational money. Correct. To help students. Correct. And and we could also put twelve or whatever amount we thought into fill in the hole we originally had with the universities. Uh, with, with the same stipulation that they would have to realize that this money that they're getting is going to be backed out in two years. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sir, while I'm up here, if I could, we yes. received some additional information. I, I provided a little bit of misinformation this morning on the comprehensive grant. Uh, in 2019 and 2020, there were 24,000 students that applied for the grant and only 9,500 could use the current 16,000 funding. So the 9,000 students was what were funded out of a total of 24,314. So adding money to the comprehensive grant allows you to fund more than the 9,500. Thank you. Any other questions, Shirley, while she's up here? Senator Fagg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I was sitting here thinking on utility bills. Did that include the uh, technical colleges? Yes. Yes, sir. It included uh, community, technical, and Washburn. All of them. Okay. All of them. I want to make sure. Yes, because we, we, we thought we had left Washburn out, so okay. great question. Okay, so committee, here's where we are so far. I guess we, we got the 20 million in promise. We got the 3.5 tech. We have four and four on the comprehensive. We have the 11, 334, 615, plus the, or that includes the 200,000 for any uh, utility bills that would come in later. Have you ever thought of just making it 11, four? It's maybe. Eleven four. I'm just saying. We could. He's the the, the uh, the suggestion was two hundred thousand. So I just added two hundred on to eleven one thirty four six one five. So I, I guess we could round it up and and just make it eleven uh, eleven four if everyone's okay with that. We look at that fund for community colleges at the same level as technical colleges. Yes, just a second. I was just going to get you a total and then come to see what kind of amount. So, with what we've done so far, we're at thirty-eight million nine hundred thousand, and uh, so if we want to do uh, some particular amounts for the. Community colleges. Would it be 9.5 if it's at the same level as technical? That's 500,000 per community college. Okay. So, uh, Shirley, okay, another question on this. So, it, we, do, we do the uh, uh, same amount for the tech college. Now, you said we can put parameters on this because we need to make sure it's one time and it, we need to make sure that it meets the maintenance of effort, okay? Mm -hmm. And so what if a community college doesn't have something that they can use? I mean, 
Well, my question would be if, if we're comparing this 9.5 for community colleges, the 3.5 was for equipment at capital outlay. Are you saying the 9.5 is for capital outlay for community colleges? Are you comparing the same? It, it, I mean, community colleges, uh, yes, it would be the okay. same. Yeah. Um, it would be for one-time money for equipment and, and one-time expenses. So we would create a fund called community colleges capital outlay and put $9.5 million in. Okay. Is, is the committee okay with 9.5, same as the tech colleges? Oh, excuse me. Senator Hawk. I think we have, I think we're creating a problem that's different. Uh, community colleges have mill levies and fund their capital outlay, and, and our tech colleges don't do that. So I think we're going down the wrong path here. I'm all for trying to close the gap uh, if we need to, but I don't, I don't think we want to equate the tech college issue with the fact that they haven't been able <coughs> They have access to money for physical things like community colleges have. And, and I still want to make sure we close that gap in terms of the allotments that happened in terms of higher ed. And I want to make sure, I don't know if your 38 million had that 12 million in to close that gap. No, so we said 38.9. So if, if you don't want to do the tech separate, or the community college is separate. If you're if you're if you don't want to do that, we could put uh, you know 15 in to higher ed, which got us to 53, and it would be in addition to the 24 nine. So it counts for the maintenance of effort. I mean, if 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 we're to the balance point, if you don't want to do the community colleges, then we could. Uh, and the community colleges will get part of the 15. Yeah, yeah they will. So I mean, I would rather do that than create. Their, in essence, capital outlay problem with our community college. Uh, I think Shirley Senator just Penny. told us that they community college would not get any of that. So I'm I'm, I'm I don't see where we have this. I, I'm I'm sorry. I just, I don't. We're going towards 53 million. We're not there. How are we get? Well, we're 38.9. 38.9. 38, 38, before the community colleges. No. Oh, yeah. Before anything else, and then. You suggested the community colleges, and Senator Hawk didn't like that, and he suggested we just stick with uh, adding to the uh, 24.9, which would be, uh, you know, 15. And, and if which, I, which gets us to 53. If I could just, in that 15, which is where this all started from, was the reduced resources package. And the Senate uh, added almost 25 million back in. So there's still 2% of that, which this would restore that amount. That money does have the tiered and non-tiered in it. It's just not the same percentage of reduction that the universities. So there is money that would go for that 15 million that would go to community and technical colleges. Okay, so now we're talking about technical colleges, now that I don't, you know, I'm not concerned about technical colleges, but now we're talking about technical colleges that are now here twice. Well, again, the capital outlay is just for equipment. This is operating expenditures. But they're still in here twice. Correct. Mr. Chairman, could I reply to Senator Petty so, quickly? Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, the technical colleges have been in a, in a unique hole that the community colleges have not been in. So that $3.5 million is trying to fix a problem that is unique to technical colleges relative to their funding that community colleges don't face. And so I think we're trying to equalize something that and we're really just trying to use uh, maintenance of effort money to fix a problem we haven't been able to fix for a while. And I think we're better off putting that $15 million in to uh, the reduced resource and restoring that, which community colleges will get part of that, 
and we've also provided other money in terms of Senate Bill 155 for community. So we're not leaving community colleges out. And, and I think we're restoring what is a bigger hole in the university system. Any other questions for Shirley? Senator Fagg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Shirley, while we have you at the mic and we're going over all these, is, is there anything out there that we're missing that you're aware of in your position? Not that we haven't discussed. I'm waiting on Amy to get me an answer on a question, so. On the promise, it's 10 and 10, so it's 10 for, for 22, the tech 3.5, comprehensive scholarship, 4 and 4 in 
22 and 4 and 4 in 23, 11, 4 for utilities. That gives us a, a total in 22 of 32.9. Uh, suggestion would be we need approximately 20, so 15 to add to the 24.9, one time money, and then five to the tiered, which would take care of uh, some of the tiered, non tiered, correct, uh, take care of part of that. That would get us to 53 million. One of the things about the tiered and non tiered is it that that is a calculated system we have now, unlike if you had like when you're talking about a specific amount of money that go that would be for community colleges to per per community college. Um, Senator McGinn was just talking about um, which about and I think there's at least six of our community colleges that have um, day, daycares within um, their establishment and, and a funding that would help to, um, even though it's one time, it could help with equipment, it could help with, with uh, building them up. So um, it's going to look like more of a takeaway when you, after you put it into the tier, and tier, tier and non tier, and then into just a account. You know, I'm we're open for discussion here. I mean, it's uh, is is everyone okay with the fifteen adding to the twenty four nine? Can we agree on that? Okay, so that would just leave the five, and and we're talking either tier, non tier. We're talking daycare or whatever. I, I, I as long as we can figure it out that it's you know one time. Senator Hawk. Uh, I feel like I'm in the debate on the floor yesterday <laughs> where the different caucuses managed to go after each other. But <laughs> uh, how about if we left that as a, as a general item and we get to conference and get a little more information both from the uh, higher ed folks and the community college folks and see what the best way is to look at how we might allocate that money and if it tiered, non-tiered that gets at the programs and is a better way to account for it or if some other kind of a block grant with application and we leave that open, but we sort of have that money in there and let the conference committee process and whatever extra information we get between now and then sort of uh, settle that out. Is it, would the committee be okay with that suggestion and try to figure out on the five million with, with, within the conference and center pity. So now we're taking five million and we're going to do it something else with it where we're not going to have anything specific for community colleges. Senator Hawk. No, it, it would be there. I'm just not sure, honestly, until we have some more information what the best way is. My bias is the tiered, non-tiered actually gets it to the right program, but you're making a point that maybe having it as a, a block that would be available for community colleges and some other way to allocate it. I'm just not sure what the best way is to do that. That would be helpful. And, and again, I've mentioned some other things that community colleges are certainly a different kind of operation than tech colleges and, and uh, the nature of the property tax supporting them and their base. So we, we, I, I think they'll get the money. It's, I, we just need to figure out what the best way is to do that. Well, you could create a new MOE fund with five million and and one-time funds, so that's clear that it's one-time funds. Yes, I, and but I think we could work that out in conference. I, yeah, my suggestion would be we just put that we will will add five million for the community colleges, and we will determine how it is as we get into this. Uh, I think that's probably the easiest because I think if, if the will of the committee is to add five million for community colleges, that's what we'll do. We'll add five million and we'll determine uh, how when we figure that out. Is that okay with everyone? 
Okay. Well, with that, committee, we are at $53 million, magically. <laughs> So if, if everyone's okay with that proviso, we'll, we'll have that proviso uh, and put that as our position in the budget. Okay. So the next item we have is uh, the docking building. Everyone had received uh, the uh, amendment proposed draft for May 3rd, and uh, I think, unless the committee tells me different, I think most of the committee members were okay with the, uh, the part of the docking remodel, and I think uh, if everybody's okay with that piece, we'll, we'll not mess with it, and then we'll go to the KDHE lab piece, and uh, Senator McGinn had offered uh, a couple of amendments to that to, to keep it in Topeka, and uh, I guess I uh, want to make sure we're all okay with, with, with the amendments. Are we all in agreement that we should keep it in Topeka after knowing there's two to 300 uh, employees involved? Okay. Senator Hawk? I'm fine with keeping it in Topeka. I'm, I'm not totally turned off with the idea, but I don't want to kick the can down the road so far. I'm, I'm not very comfortable with some information I just saw on uh, the creative idea of moving it to the museum and trying to move the museum into the docking building. I, I, I think that train Unless we want, it might be cheaper to build a track directly uh, from the museum to the docking building to move the train, but then we got no place to put the train. So I, th I think there's some, every creative idea seems to have complications, but. Um, uh, well, I, I think, you know, primarily what we're talking about, yeah, and we'll get to you just one second. I think primarily what we're talking here now is we're, we're in agreement that we probably ought to be just leave the employees here in Topeka. So if we're in agreement on that, then I, I don't know that we're, we, we need to nail down whether it's moved to the museum or, or, or wherever, but Senator Solentrump. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think uh, a couple things that we are in agreement with is that we need to renovate docking itself. Um, we've got the opportunity for the lowest bond rate uh, here presently that we've seen for some time, and uh, as well as federal funds that could be applied even if a, perhaps a portion of KDHE administrative uh, department were to occupy that building. But in any event, um, I think we're gonna have some deadlines uh, from research at some point here in the near future that's gonna give us a hard date on when we need to make sure that we make that decision. So with that in mind, when we receive that, and I'm hoping it's fairly soon, um, we can confirm that and then agree to it. So again, I'm uh, in clear agreement with uh, renovating the entire docking building, even if we don't occupy it all. Um, I too, as Mr. As Senator Hawk has indicated, uh, have more trouble uh, seeing some transition there with the uh, Kansas Museum of History uh, flip-flopping that and making that work. Uh, from the information I've received, that would be a uh, all hill to climb. So uh, again, I just want to point out that the primary uh, objective is to make sure that we proceed on the docking building itself with the renovation and reoccupancy of some of our agencies. Thank you. Senator McGinn. Sorry. The whole amendment is, uh, 
I mean, the, what you're going to put in there just moves the process forward and says keep the lab in Topeka. Senator Petty. Are we still, are, is this still including any discussion about, I think, within what Senator McGinn had laid out there? She'd said 10, within a 10 mile radius of the Capitol, that the, the actual Bill said eight, but are we going to to are we still talking about that kind of parameters as well? Yeah, that was the amendment, and and if we're okay with the amendment, unless you wanted to change it to ten, so I eight said includes, eight. Eight includes K and I, includes Washburn, includes all kinds of possibilities across the street. Senator Hawk, uh, I'm I'm assuming the base proposal that Senator Claysbach. Uh, uh, st includes the KDHE lab. I, I agree that docking is a priority, but uh, for me, building a new lab is also a fairly urgent priority, too. So, yes, I just wanted to make sure we weren't only thinking docking. No, we, we just agreed earlier that everyone liked the docking piece of this um, yes. document, and then uh, where we were discussing was the lab. Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I did want to make sure that, you know, one of the things that we talked about at length in joint state building construction, and of course we've been doing this for years, um, trying to vet every every idea that someone comes up with. Um, I'm surprised that the building hasn't been proposed as a giant terrarium at this point. Um, but there have been a lot of ideas, and it seems like at the 11th hour there's always some new idea. So I very much appreciate the proviso work that Senator McGinn has done here, and that's fantastic. One thing I did want to make sure of, though, after all of the discussions that were had, and that is that um, we have disabused ourselves of the notion of cramming the, the KDHE labs into the docking building. Um, I'm going to propose a real radical idea here, and that is that an office building should just be used as, as an office building. And perhaps we should define that we do want to see docking be an office building, and um, then we can decide on how the KDHE labs are, are taken care of as well as two separate items. Um, so I, I would want that somewhere spelled out in here that we have decided at this stage that the docking building, when it is renovated, um, that, that it does not include KDHE labs, that it is primarily an office building. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, th I think we've done that uh, already. We had, we had all agreed that, uh, that uh, the lab would be in a separate building, so I think that's covered. Okay, anything else on this? So is everyone okay with, we'll put the amendment, sorry. Senator Clays, use your mic, if you would. Next to it. Oh, 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 you're kidding. Okay. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I want to make sure everyone agrees before I say it out loud. Yeah, all right. <laughs> never, never go into a debate without knowing if you're going to win or lose. Um, yeah, so uh, I would say perhaps we should put in some numbers here, and I'm, I'm trying to rely on just the years of, of hearing all the feedback on what different things cost, so we may have to amend this when we go into... Um, into conference, but I, I believe if I recall correctly that with equipment, the lab would be roughly 55 million, um, that it's closer to the 40s without the equipment, but we should probably just bond all that together. And then um, docking, I think we were safe in the 120 range, so I'd probably just put 120 there. Um, the price did drop a little bit this last time that we were talking about it, so it should come in under that. Mitty, are, are, are we comfortable with those numbers? I mean, it, it, this has got to go to the building committee and the finance council and, and 
there's a number of steps before it's getting there, but so we have something in there, I guess. Is everyone comfortable with that? Okay. All right. Uh, so we'll add the, the two amendments in this, and uh, that'll be our position on on uh, the docking. Everybody okay with that? Okay. I think that was all we had on the agenda. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. Mom doesn't want to go to lunch, so. Committee, any other discussion? Seeing none, uh, thank everyone. We are adjourned.